They're so aggressive. It's like, it's like they're from New York. Uh, I feel like I haven't been here in a month. It's been a month. Um, it's really good to be here, man. Actually, after you've been through what I've been through, it's good to be anywhere, but... Uh, it's good to be here. I went to the doctor this week, one of them. I have two more next week. The ones next week are really important. The one this week wasn't extremely important, but I, I, I did get a pretty good report. But the doctor, you know, the, you know, there's a medical school here in Macon, so a lot of the medical students come and they do rotations at different doctor's offices. This one doctor, he always has medical students with him. And because I'm some freak, <laughs> he always brings them in. So they came in, a whole entourage, like six of them. And they said, listen, the doctor will be in like five minutes. I'm like, great. So I talked to them and just said, you know, it's amazing to me that some of you guys probably don't believe in God, but you're studying medicine. How could you study the intricacies of the body like you do for so many years and not come to the conclusion that an in, there's an intelligent designer? Amen. Putting your shoe aside, just that this could not be from a single cell. You know, you, you, you have more faith than I do if you believe that. And so the doctor came and he goes, oh, no, you're being a rabbi? And I go, yep. <laughs> and I was with them for like 20, 25 minutes. And uh, he says, I got to see other patients. I said, yeah, I know. Uh, I just got a text from Bernadette. She's watching. She said, behave yourself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Johnny, Johnny Price uh, had a knee replacement. And um, yeah, he's been with us since the beginning, he and Linda. And he's been, you know, you, a lot of you know him, but he does a lot of things. So he's been cleaning the synagogue for years. Yes. You know what I mean? Doing stuff around here. He's very faithful. He's a great guy. Johnny's a great guy. So I know he's watching. And I text him to see how he's doing. And he texts me back and he goes, you know, not bad. He goes, do you think we can go out to eat? And I knew he was in a lot of pain, and I knew it wasn't really a good idea, but I knew he, he's a go-getter. He's not the couch potato. He's always doing something. So I said, sure, I'll pick you up and take you out to eat. So he had his walker, and he had his cane, and I, I had to, you know, get him in the car, and then get his walker in the car. Some of you probably know the drill, right? And I said to him when he got in the car, I said, you know, Johnny, I know he's watching right now. <laughs> I said, Johnny, when I was born, my mom's dad and my father's dad were already passed, so I never had a grandfather. <laughs> so I said, if you wouldn't mind, what do you want to go by tonight? Like pee pop, pop pa. <laughs> so I got him in the restaurant, and the waitress came over and she goes, How are you doing tonight? I said, Great. I'm taking my grandfather out for dinner. <laughs> and uh, when she came at the end of the meal and she said, it was so funny, she said, that's so sweet of you. I said, I know. <laughs> and she came at the end of the dinner and she said, do you want dessert? And I said, oh, not really because we're running late. I got to get them back to the home. They're very strict. <laughs> and she says, can't you at least have dessert? I said, look, if I get him late one more time, then he's not allowed to play bingo for the rest of the week. <laughs> Hey, Johnny. <laughs> Hope you're feeling better. Praying for you every day, pal. Uh, but the good news is, you know, he, he's going to get better. Yeah. It's just a matter of, you know, about eight weeks rehabilitation, he gets better. That's the good news. Some of us are stuck with things that, you know, we just can't get better. You know, we're just stuck with it, right? So it's a different ball game. Um, I'd like to read a psalm to you like we've been doing for 30 years now, 21 years here. Um, I love this psalm. I really feel like God picked it. Rabbi, how do you know? I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to think that I can hear his voice pretty good. And, you know, you can't go wrong reading the Word of God, right? It doesn't matter what you read in here, you know? I mean, if, if, if it was up to God, he'd highlight the whole thing. We highlight bits and pieces like, ooh, this is the good part. It's all the good part. 
there's, there's nothing weak in here. And if you ever want to hear God's voice, don't get too caught up in prophetic ministries because most of them are pathetic. Get caught up in the Word of God. You know, some of you follow people online. Follow God. This is everything you need to know is in here. It's absolutely and positively complete. And um, I don't want to point fingers, but a lot of believers don't even read it. Which is, to me, it's just hot when I look at the statistics that 3% maybe of the body of believers reads the Bible daily. That, I can't even believe that. I just... Anyway, this is a great psalm. It's, um, it's speaking about when Messiah comes at the end of the tribulation and the world government is on his shoulders. And um, I'm sure most of you are looking forward to that. I know I am. Um, I'm sorry? Number two. Sorry. Psalm number two. Why are the nations in an uproar? The people's grumbling in vain. I mean, I, I think we should hear that today. Why are so many of you in an uproar? Why are you so worried? So worried about the future and the economy and who's going to be elected. And, and then, you know, over and over again we read, do not worry. Do not worry. If you focus on all this bad news, you're going to worry. There's no way around it, I'm telling you. But if you focus on the good news, there's so much bad news. I've come here to give you great news today. The earth's kings are taking position. This is at the end of time. Leaders conspiring together against Adonai. They're, they're going to do all they can to try to prevent the Messiah from taking the reins of world government. They, they believe they're going to win. I mean, they're duped, but they believe it. A lot of people are duped, but they believe it. They believe it. They cry, let's break their fetters. Let's throw off their chains. They, they are aggressive, and they're angry, and they're coming against God. This is priceless, verse 4. After you hear that, they're... they're they're brutal. Guys, you see what's going on today, right? Th this isn't just basic sin. This is evil. Personified. I mean, I don't want to get political because I really dis dis despise politics and politicians. I really do. But the problem isn't guns. The problem is evil. You've got to cure the evil, the mental illness. I got news for you. In New York, guns are totally outlawed. Criminals still get them. Heroin's outlawed. You can still get it. This is... Maxi, listen to this. He who sits in heaven laughs. You need to laugh a little bit more. You're so worried about who's going to be in office in the United States. You think a person is capable of fixing this mess? Then why are you waiting for Messiah? He who sits in it, God laughs. Shouldn't we? You know the end of the story. You know where this is going. You know. Why do you keep forgetting? You know why? Because you know it theologically, but you don't know it practically. You just know it here. You don't have it here. Adonai looks at them in derision. That means he mocks. So at first he's like, seriously? He's laughing. But then it doesn't take him long to go. Then his anger. He laughs for a bit, and then he gets angry. Like, watch, 
what I do to you. Then in anger, he rebukes them, terrifies them in his fury. This fulfillment, these promises you're reading, they're as certain as they already happen. Why don't you see that? I wish some of you spoke about Yeshua HaMashiach as much as you speak about Trump and Kamala. I wish. Remember when you used to evangelize in high school? It was 40 years ago. I myself, this is God speaking, have installed my king. He's ordained it. You can't thwart God. Nobody's ever been able to thwart God. In, in, in all of history, it's never going to happen. You've got to trust that kid. You're driving yourself crazy. I myself have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. You see that um, stained glass we have in Michamocha? I, I designed it. It's prophetic. Do you notice what's not on that stained glass? The Dome of the Rock, because when Yeshua comes, it goes. And that, let me, I got news for you. And Yeshua is the only rock that is doming Israel. Some of you are under the delusion, I don't know where you got it from, that Israel's army is unbelievable. And Israel said, where did you get this from? How many people do you know in the army? One? One guy you're a pen. What, what do you know about their army? They're using helmets from Vietnam War. Their army is not strong. Their God is. It's not their army. Trust me. I know a lot of guys in the army. I know a colonel who's in charge of 150,000 troops. They know it's God. And you think it's them. Oh, you can't beat Israel. God is protecting Israel. I will proclaim the decree. Now Yeshua speaks. Isn't that great? You see God speaking. Now you see Yeshua speaking. But it's the Psalms. It's 3,000 years ago. Yep. This is Yeshua speaking. I will proclaim the decree. I don't know. He said to me, you are my son. I don't know if the Jewish, the Orthodox skip over this. They go, where does it say that Yeshua is God's son? He has no son. Islam says he has no son. The Jews say he has no son. Funny. Psalm 2 says he does. Today I became your father. Ask of me. And I will make the nations your inheritance. The whole wide world. God has promised Yeshua universal dominion. And it shall come to pass. In my mind, it's already happened. It's already happened. He's king of the whole earth. The whole wide world will be your possession. You will, now he's coming to judge. He's not, listen. He's not coming back. He's not the baby in the manger when he comes back, guys. You're not going to put him in a little cradle and change his diapers. He's coming back with fire in his eyes and a sword in his mouth on a war horse. That's why you got to get out there and warn people. And cut to the chase. Stop saying, don't have these hour-long discussions with people. Well, if everybody obeyed God, it would be better. Stop it. They're not going to get saved by that. Yeshua saves. He didn't say come to church. He didn't say come to the communion table. He didn't say come to the waters of baptism. He said come to me. Bring him to Yeshua, man. Cut to the chase. Some of you have like diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. Cut to the chase. Telling non-believers about prophetic nonsense. Do you know, I'm not insinuating, but most churches don't even talk about Yeshua anymore. They just drop him in here and there. Isn't that crazy? It's his church and they're not talking about him. Whew. 
Anyway, let me try that again. Let me let me do it in the immortal words of Billy Billy Abney. Woo! <laughs> you will break them with an iron rod. That's judgment. Shatter them like a clay pot. You ever take like a coffee mug and and hit it with a like a heavy ladle? Just shatters. That's what Yeshua is going to do to the nations. Therefore, kings, this is, this is a moving evangelistic appeal. A moving evangelistic appeal. Guys, the whole, every story in the Old Testament points to Yeshua. You know what the Gospels are? I'm here. You know what the letters are? Be more like them. You know what Revelation is? I'm coming back. That's your Bible. Rabbi, you make it so simple. It is. You make it so complicated. Therefore, kings, be wise. Be warned, you judges of the earth, you people in power. Serve Adonai with fear. Rejoice. Rejoice, but with trembling. Don't get too crazy. Some of you get a little too crazy in your praise. Nutty the squirrel. <laughs> trembling, man. Tremble before God. Work out your salvation, fear and trembling, not in nuttiness. And look what it says here. This is, this is a call to submit. Submit. Surrender your life already. Stop making decisions on your own. Kiss the son. Lest he be angry. And you perish along the way. When suddenly his anger blazes. How blessed. Oh, golly, jeepers. Don't you feel stupidly blessed? And if you don't, here's my question. Why not? Why not? Besides salvation, what else are you looking for? Everything else is totally anticlimactic to me. I'm not trying to share the gospel with everybody because I'm trying to score points with God or score points with you or feel good about myself. It's the greatest news. And it's the only news we're not sharing. We're sharing everything else. And I know I sound like a broken record, but I'll move on when you get the message. You get all psyched, you get, oh, I'm going to share it this week, and then next week comes and it's history. This is who you are, man. This is what Yeshua calls us to do. How blessed are all who take refuge in Him. To trust is the most sane, logical, reasonable thing you can do. And to disbelieve is about as irrational a thing as a person could do. We are so blessed beyond the curse. You're really saved forever. You're going to live here. You're not going to play a harp on a cloud. That doesn't sound like fun to me. And that's not what the Bible says. We're going to live here, but it's going to be restored. I'm so tired of going to doctors. I'm so tired of it. Pinch yourself. It's real. You're saved eternally. He's coming back. It's real. Yeah. It's great. You're blessed. Crazy blessed. You think, ah, oh, if I just, if I just, they just came out with a 70 inch screen. As, as, as Max would happen, we had that bubble set 26 inches. And my kid said, because they went over to somebody's house, Dad, it'd be really cool if we got a bigger screen. I said, you want a bigger screen? They said, yeah. I said, sit on the couch. And I pushed the couch closer to the screen. <laughs> I was with them all, and they all told me, you know, it's funny when they, they grow up, it's a whole different relationship you have. They all told me, you know, Dad, you were, you were pretty strict when we were young. I said, I know. I wanted to be. I didn't want to be your friend. 
I want to be your father. And I've seen what happened when parents are too lenient with their kids. You think you're doing them a favor? Ooh, you're setting yourself up for aggravation. Uh-uh, I let them know early on. So all it took was a look. And then, it's not like I beat them or anything like that. It was never like that. But they knew I was dad. And they knew that the fifth commandment said to honor me. And it doesn't say to honor me if I do what they want. It just says to honor me. And as old as they are, and even though they could tan me from limb for limb, I still say, doesn't take much. If they just get a little wise, I go, Exodus 20, 12. Be the parent. Be the believer. Be happy. I know you're going through a lot of stuff. Guess what? So am I. But that's not going to get in the way of my joy for what my Father has done for me. The joy of the Lord shall be my strength. Amen? And look, you deserve it. It's Shabbat. Have a good time. It's a holiday, right? According to Leviticus 23, today's a holiday. You've worked, you've toiled, you've done all week. You've had things going on, I know. Breathe. It's Shabbat. Enjoy it. Enjoy praising God with other like-minded believers. Enjoy maybe hearing a word, God speaking to you. I don't know, it's very possible. Enjoy just being free. Enjoy being free. Break loose of those chains. Rabbi got issues. No kidding, every human being does. But you, you can't keep looking at how far you have to go. You gotta look in the rear view a little bit and see how far you've come. We've all come very far, haven't we? I, I know some of you, before you got saved. You were horrible. And I don't, mean, I don't mean in terms of sin. You were horrible. You didn't even want to be around yourself. And look how God's working on you and chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and making you into something magnificent. And he's still doing it. It's a lifelong process. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. And every time you fall short and the devil whispers in your ear, see, you're the same. Say, get the behind me Satan in the name of Yeshua my Messiah flee don't you listen to him he's not going to tell you nothing good stick with the Lord Father thank you for this day it's going to be a great one isn't it yeah yeah you know we know it's going to be great thanks for letting us come together and just enjoying each other, enjoying you. And Father, for those who are maybe really, really, really going through it, whether it's mental anguish or just they just feel like they can't have any more weight on their shoulders. They just bent over like that woman in the Bible. Straighten them up today, Father. Let them walk out of here with their head high knowing how much you love them. I pray all this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.